You know, the Atlantic Magazine is one of those epic August publications that survived for decades despite changing societies and new technologies. Now, it's a little left of center, but it's an intelligent read, and half a million subscribers agree. However, a recent article by Jerry Usim entitled, What Was Volkswagen Thinking Hit a Raw Nerve? A key premise of his piece is that corporations respond to crises with a set of unwritten scripts imported from the organization around them. The idea is that there's a standardized analysis in response to serious corporate issues, which acts something like a playbook that managers follow rightly or wrongly. Now, Seam argues that over time, the scripts become altered in ways that remove morality from the equation and allow seriously deviant behavior. He cites the classic example. Morton Fire calls reversal of an earlier no-launch call, which resulted in the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger and the loss of seven lives. He further cites Johnson & Johnson's handling of the Tylenol scare as examples of good corporate practice. In essence, Usim argues that corporate culture stems from the top, and that it's a slippery slope from don't ask, don't tell, down to outright fraud. Now, is he right? Conceptually, maybe so, but comparing the Volkswagen emissions cheating scandal, for example, to Johnson & Johnson's experience with Tylenol, or Morton Thiokol's with solid booster O-rings, well, it's questionable at best. Now, Usim is an experienced business writer, but financial types have a tendency to lump all industries together. Volkswagen, Johnson & Johnson, and Morton Thiokol are all manufacturers, yes, but they represent a widely divergent subset of the industry. Morton Thiokol, for example, was never a mass producer of shuttle components. No one was. That project was years late and billions of dollars over budget, and NASA endured delay after delay to simultaneously develop and produce low-volume technologies for the program. Now, in the Thiokol example, no one under-engineered the O-ring that failed. The failure was in the decision to override the O-ring's documented performance limitations by cold-soaking the part and freezing temperatures before launch. The Tylenol incident, it was also different. In this case, unanticipated and an unprecedented tampering of the product led Johnson & Johnson management to the only logical course of action, a massive product recall and a redesign of the packaging to make it tamper evident. Now, these actions saved the Tylenol brand and probably billions of market cap for Johnson & Johnson. But the tampering was an external event, not triggered by any active commission or omission in the manufacturing process. It's easy to take the high road when someone external does it to you. For Volkswagen, however, things are significantly different. Internal company engineers created defeat devices that cheated on EPA emissions tests for some of VW's diesel engine models. It wasn't vandals, blackmailers, or government bureaucrats. In this sense, the VW case is more serious, an overt effort to design fraud into the product from the get-go. Now, it's true that corporate leadership is ultimately responsible for everything that happens from the shop floor to the boardroom, but the argument that high-level management was involved in the scandal seems far-fetched to me. From mass production to consumer goods, it's a different world. No one produces a new product, then goes looking for the market. In fact, it's the other way around. Sales and marketing types identify a target market, then apply pressure on the R&D and engineering departments to build the product to fill that need. Now, VW's goal was simple, a significant improvement in fuel efficiency without complex after-treatment systems. So here's what I think happened to Volkswagen. A marketing team identified the performance attributes needed to maintain the firm's strong market share in the compact car segment. Management then charged the engineering departments to develop the necessary technologies to hit those performance goals within a time window to suit the new model production changeover and the marketing department's advertising plan. Now, engineering agreed to this project, but deep into the timeline discovered that they simply couldn't meet all three critical performance parameters of performance, time, and cost. And I suspect this is where VW Engineering made their mistake. At that point, they needed to delay production of the new engines, perhaps for as much as a full model year, while they ironed out the bugs. Now, this has been done before, but in the brutally competitive world of low-margin, high-volume automaking, there's a considerable fear that a competitor will be first to market, at a cost of hundreds of millions of dollars in lost sales. I think that somewhere down the engineering management chain and powertrain development, someone wrote that a feat software code is a stopgap measure to keep the prototype engines up and running, with the intention of tweaking the design later in development. Once the power plant team was too deep into the timeline, however, it was impossible to go back and fix the problem. So they did nothing, probably with the intention of addressing the issue at the next redesign or design review, possibly for the following model year. So at this point, the only career-saving option for the engineers involved is to say nothing and just hope they can get away with it. The notion that this is a vast conspiracy of VW management in order to cheat the EPA is ludicrous. If this scheme ever reached the level of upper management, they would have to have assumed that the plan had passed through enough people that secrecy would be impossible to maintain, and they'd therefore veto the scheme even if they had no ethical issues with it. Market cap means a lot to individuals whose compensation packages more stock options than salary. So what's the lesson here? It's not that honesty and corporate responsibility are critical engineering issues that need to be driven home by upper management. The lesson is that manufacturing organizations need to create a culture where failure is possible and acceptable as part of the development process to making great products. No matter what was promised in terms of performance and timelines, physics is still physics. So if something can't be achieved, a slip in specifications or development time must be tolerated. 
All cutting edge technologies go through this, from track shoes to space shuttles. Now somebody at VW attempted to save their career with a desperate Hail Mary pass. And miracles sometimes happen on the gridiron, but not so often in Wolfsburg.